I just made perfectly grilled pork burgers. Forget the beef. I'm going to take you through each step on why these have so much flavor, are super easy to make, super economical, and really bring in the grilling season. Let's make some. It's finally time for grilling season. And if you're in a cold area like I am in Iowa during the winter, you look forward to grilling season all year long and pork burgers are a great way to get out there. Now, growing up, our pork burgers were always pre-made for us, even though we raised pork and so I was very used to them. They would come back from the butcher already done with seasonings. And I think it's much more fulfilling just to make your own with ground pork and you can make really just more flavorful, really good quality ones. And that's what this is about. So. Don't worry about hamburger today. It's all about pork and it really can be flavored in a delicious way. And it starts with good ground pork. And the reason I'm saying good ground pork is you want the pork to have flavor. You want it to be good quality and make sure that you only need to enhance what's there. So to do that, we're gonna start with salt. Salt is super important, not only because it brings out the natural flavor, it also helps with moisture retention. And really the thing is, if you're gonna be cooking at home, you're always gonna use less salt than if you were eating out or eating pre-packaged or processed foods. So we have the salt in there and now we're gonna ump up the flavor. So that's gonna start with some onion powder. And again, you know, the thing about it is, each of these just adds and kind of plays this great background character to it. Some garlic powder. We're gonna add in some black pepper, super important. I think the black pepper, I think we underrate black pepper and I do freshly grind mine, I will admit that. Then we're gonna add in completely non-traditional and something you're gonna say, well, I don't have that in my fridge miso and this is a beautiful miso and the reason i'm adding miso in miso is a fermented soybean paste of sorts and what it has is this deep rich flavor when you eat these you're not thinking is miso in there no but you're thinking these have such a great underlying richness and depth to them and if i can find this in iowa in my small town you can too. Miso is a great thing, and it really is a great way to add this oomph to it and make these extra, extra special. Now, to help bind them a little bit and just add a little bit more richness, because pork is lean, it's gonna add an egg yolk. So we're gonna put the egg yolk right in here, and then we just need to mix it all together. And right before my hands get too dirty, I'm gonna pull over my little station here so when we portion them, it's ready to go. I do like to weigh them usually before I do it, just so I can make sure they're the right portion if you want to do it equally. I'm gonna have all this ready, a parchment lined baking sheet, that's what I will form them on. Now, the thing is, when you go to mix it, you can put gloves on, you can use a spatula, but really it's best to use your hands because that's gonna actually make sure these ingredients are mixing really well, and that's the important part. You don't want pockets of meat that feels like it's not mixed with everything, that doesn't have those seasonings properly in. You don't want pockets of seasoning. So this is really simple, and when you think about it, I think we just always assume if we're gonna grill, it has to be hamburger but it doesn't. And it can be just as delicious, if not more delicious in some cases. So I wanna make sure I mix this really well. We always hear don't overwork the meat. And while that's true, you also don't wanna underwork it where it's not mixed well. So I'm gonna mix it just enough so it's all put together. When I have it all mixed, which doesn't take too long, what I do, this is just, I have one clean hand, one dirty hand, I lift it, I take my bowl and I tear it on my on my scale, which means tear it just means to take it to zero and make the bowl just part of the original weight. And then I put this in. While I know how much I did put in, obviously, I like to be able to, just with any of the ingredients we added, make sure exactly where we're at. Then I'm gonna take that and divide it by how many burgers I wanna make. So I take my total, I usually do it in grams because you can easily divide that out. And then we can make eight individual patties. Now, if you want really big ones, you could do six. I usually do eight. So now I just take each one and I kind of roughly start seeing how much I need to do. Now, if you notice, I have saran wrap on or plastic wrap on that scale. So that way I can put stuff on there and not get it too messy. I know. I do try to be precise. That way you just get equal sizes. Not that you need to. And then when I get done forming it there, I make it into a nice somewhat of a ball and then I'll shape them down to a patty once they're all made. That way if I need to adjust any of them. But I think it's easier to start with kind of that nice ball and then go from there. So I'm gonna make my eight patties and then we'll form them and then we're gonna grill them. See, it's super simple. So I'm now forming them out into patties and I just use a three inch biscuit cutter. I find that works best, that way you don't have to. If you grew up like I did and you had tons of Tupper in the house, Tupperware used to have the brand a hamburger patty or a patty former that you would press down and do it. Some people love those. I don't think they make them anymore. 
but you can probably find one at like a thrift store. But otherwise, I just use this biscuit cutter. I put it around my ball of meat and then just press it out. Just kind of keep pressing into the edges and then it gives you that perfectly circle, which won't stay perfect on the grill. And it will shrink slightly, which you can do the whole divot if you want to in the center to help it from shrinking, where you press slightly a divot in the middle. That does help a little bit. I think it's still, either way, you're gonna get the shrinking. It's never gonna be perfect. But you can see at least gives you kind of a round burger. The other week, actually, my mom was here and she was having a burger. She's like, how do you get your so round? And I was like, a biscuit cutter, mom, obviously. <laughs> so once I have these all pressed out, I need to wash my hands. I'm gonna turn the grill on. Right before we go out, I'll show you though, I like to do a quick final finish on these and then we're gonna grill them. Like I said, pork can be a lean meat, so a little drizzle of a neutral oil. One helps them on the grill, but also just gives them the final kind of just nice flavor and richness. So I put a little bit of oil on, and then I will just take a sprinkling of salt just to finish them off. And you know why you sprinkle high above when you see this? It's not just so you look fancy. It's not just fancy. It's actually because you get a more even coating of the salt and you end up using less of it than if you're really tight down in and you have to put it all over. But if you're high up, it kind of just falls nicely all over. That is why, there is a reason to that. You also look fancy. Don't we all wanna look bougie once in a while? So I'm gonna take these out, I have my grill set on high, we'll turn it down, I'm gonna brush it off, and we're gonna grill. With the grill on high or medium high, just place the burgers right on the heat. Grill them for about four to five minutes until they're nicely browned, flip them, and then grill them for an additional four to five minutes until they reach 160 degrees internal temperature. I also like to grill the buns, but that's completely up to you. The burgers are grilled. I'm letting them cool off just slightly, but also anytime I grill meat, I want it to sit for a few minutes just to redistribute its juices. So I'm letting those sit and we're gonna make a quick sauce because a burger needs a sauce. It doesn't always just need ketchup and mustard, but those are delicious too. So I'm gonna start with some mayonnaise. Now this is homemade mayonnaise. It's more of an aioli. That's why you see the black pepper and everything in it. But you can use whatever mayonnaise you like. I just, I always make mine homemade, so to me, I just always will have homemade on hand and that's what I like. And there is a recipe on my website if you wanna make your own. And then to that, I'm gonna temper that so it's just not straight mayonnaise, which can be a little strong, with a little bit of Greek yogurt. You could use sour cream. Again, I have Greek yogurt on hand all the time, and that to me, I like that slight tang and how it offsets the flavor. To that, we're gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Ah, it's like that secret sauce that just enhances everything and makes a really, really good flavor. And I want this to be a mustardy sauce, so I'm using my favorite, Dijon mustard. I know some people say they don't like it, one, I don't believe you, I'm joking. You can use whatever mustard you like. You can use a grainy mustard if you want, you can use even a yellow mustard. It changes the flavor, but if that's what you prefer, that's completely fine. And then to that, we're gonna do some minced garlic. I minced it up and we're gonna put it right in there. We want this nice and garlicky. And I want that pungent flavor. I'm gonna do just a little bit of salt. There's some salt kind of flavors in that Worcestershire, but you still need just a little bit in there. And then whatever herbs I have on hand. Today I ran out to my garden, it happens to be dill and parsley. You can do some basil, you could do cilantro, it really is whatever mixture of herbs you want. I really like that mixture of a little bit of fresh green in there. I just wanna mince those up and already, ugh, they smell so good. We're gonna put that right in there. And we're just gonna mix that together, it's that simple. And I, anytime you can make a quick sauce, I think for burgers, if you're gonna have people over or just your family, it makes such a difference. And it is just that special thing that to me makes it all come together too. But look how simple that is. And it's one of those you can change it up and make it what you want. I always want to taste just a little bit of it for seasoning. Mmm, you know what it needs though? It needs just a couple cracks of black pepper. I think that'll just finish it. Just a little bit. Ooh, I love that fresh garlic with those herbs. That's perfect. So what we're gonna do now is just assemble the burger. We have our buns. I like mine a little bit charred. So whatever you want. You wanna take a nice burger? Isn't that, do you notice how the forming of it is so nice because we took that time? Now I forgot, I did go out to the garden too and I got some lettuce in. Right now my lettuce is beautiful and I grow it for things like this so I can use it and enjoy it. I'm gonna put it under the burger so you can kind of just dress it on top. I mean, look at that. Is that not gorgeous? I, this is to me from some of the fun. So I want that sauce on there. Personally, I want a good dose. But if I'm gonna eat this in front of you, I don't want it to be dripping all over me, so I'm gonna put just enough. And then some nice big slices of red onion. Red onion has that sweetness to it. 
It has that little bit of ugh, good onion flavor. You just can't go wrong with it. My mouth is watering. I don't know about you. When it's grilling season, I'm like full on ready. So here you have the perfect pork burger, all ready to go, gorgeous, fresh lettuce, fresh herbs. I'll try it. Mm. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. That is so good. What I love, there is no missing beef or hamburger here. This is a great burger on its own and it has so much flavor. And that's just from those few simple additions we did, including the miso, don't be scared of miso, into that burger itself. And it just added such great flavor. This is one of those things I think that's gonna become something you make often because pork is really reasonable. That's a great option for something to keep on hand so you can make these burgers super economical. You can make them in the morning, put them in the fridge, make the patties and everything, grill them at night. You can even freeze the patties so they're ready to go and you can grill them whenever you want. Just let them thaw out in the fridge. This is one of those things that it is the beginning of summer. It is the beginning of that flavor you wanna eat outdoors, bringing the outdoors in. So I hope you enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, if you learn something, think someone else could please share this video. That's the point. Sharing food, sharing our knowledge about food is the excitement of this. Check my website, wiseguy.com, for this recipe and all my other recipes. And until next time, let's get outside and start grilling. You can see why.